compare and to accumulate knowledge that had been created in different disciplines and even in the same discipline uh, knowledge that has been created from different theoretical point of view. So what I'm trying to do is to provide uh, a coding system that is uh, free from any theoretical or disciplinary bias and that will help people to collaborate in accumulating knowledge. But is it uh, being used already? What? Your system. No, 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 not at all. It is a... It's an idea. It's an idea. Ah, it was not here for me yesterday. Oh, okay, it's... Okay. With, uh, it's between the two, let's say. Because um, the mathematical basis is there, and let's say the, the language exists at a theoretical level. And uh, I have already published uh, one book, one, the first volume of one book, and the next volume <laughs> will be published uh, next year. So all the theory is there, but there is still no concrete or uh, usable tool. It's a very long-term uh, fundamental research project. And as you can imagine, it's, it's very, first very difficult to do, and then uh, I will have to convince Industrial people with money and uh, also my colleagues uh, and so on. So it's uh, at, at the moment it's more or less science fiction. But you know, uh, if, let's say that at the, at the beginning of the 20th century. If you have, if you had described the internet that exists today, and uh, and say to the people at that time, uh, there will be a communication system that works like this, they would have been very surprised, and they they, they would not have trusted you. So I think that we <laughs> I am more or less in this situation. It's a language for writing, like the source code, or uh, it's, it's on, a, a language only for writing, like a source code or a programming language. It's not a language for the operations. Yes, you're, you, you are right. It's a more um, scientific notation system for meaning, let's say, like scientific notation system for, for chemistry. But instead of describing molecules, it describes concepts. Uh, so it's not supposed to be spoken by people. And um, my hope is that people will be able to use this code by speaking or by writing and reading in their own natural language, in their own, own mother tongue, of course. Yes, you're right. Exactly, exactly, yes. Mr. Levy, uh, how much time to uh, this language will probably to, to is formatted in the society or uh, using practically mm. in the society? I would say one generation. But I hope that in less than 10 years, we will already see the first applications. Uh, before I die. <laughs> Sorry, what is the name of the book? That is the first volume that uh, is written? The yes, so the, the book uh, has 
already be, been published in French and it will be published in English in October. The name of the book is, in English, it is The Semantic Sphere. So, and in French, La Sphère Sémantique. language it, it's it's not like the traditional documentary languages that have just uh, short concepts that can be expressed in one two or three words you can build uh, propositions and even complex propositions with principal uh, proposition and subordinate proposition and subordinate to the subordinate so you can create very complex sentences, and you can also create whole texts. So, yes, <laughs> my, my answer is yes. And uh, it is um, inherently made to be hypertextual. I mean, one text can refer to another text and can be referred to, to another text. So it's really, it, it all works with, uh, into a uh, networked uh, framework. It, it is made for hypertext and uh, interactive digital support. A logical system. Uh, a logical, you say? Uh, like a logical system, logical proposition. Yes. Uh, the difference is that, um, the logical aspect of propositions is already taken care of by logics and by artificial intelligence. They already do this. They can automate uh, reasoning. And reasoning is about the truth value of propositions. So this already exists. What I am uh, proposing with my language is that not only the truth value of the proposition can be computed, but also the meaning of the proposition. And the meaning is the same thing that the complex network that unites one concept to all the other concepts. It's, it is a topological thing. How it is going to be developed? Yeah. How, how, is, how is it going to happen? Okay, there is, um, like uh, any language, there are two aspects. <clears throat> there is a grammar and there is a dictionary. Um, as you know, currently, if you give to, let's simplify, if you give to a computer, the grammar and the dictionary of Portuguese, for example, it will not be enough for the computer to understand a literary text in Portuguese, for example. So, um, in my language, <laughs> once you have the grammar and the dictionary, you have everything. So, uh, that's why the meaning can be computed automatically. So it's like any other language. There is a grammar that is very regular, completely fixed. And there is currently a small a core of a dictionary. And the dictionary will, be, um, will grow uh, collaboratively 
by the uh, collaborative work of people who will be involved in this enterprise. Yes. But the idea is to keep the number of uh, terms or the number of words uh, very small and that all the meaning is made by combination between these words. Because if we create a new word for each new meaning, we cannot compute the meaning. Okay, because w w what is uh, at, uh, at stake is the possibility to, to decompose um, and to rearrange networks of uh, small elements.